worth hundreds of billions of dollars a year, the gifts being given in the game of mates aren't like birthday presents, for mates don't own what they're giving. I call them grey gifts, and they're the currency of grey corruption. They're grey in the sense that they're off the books, they're not formally valued, and they're also grey in the sense that their ownership isn't nailed down. It makes them opaque, hard to see, only brought into existence when they're given. Here's an example. At a big chain fast food restaurant, the manager can't give away as much as a free bag of french fries. But they do control something of value, the roster. Some shifts are worth more than others, and the manager can grey gift the best shifts to his mates, even if it's not in the best interests of the company. The same thing happens in politics. Politicians and bureaucrats, well, they can't give away french fries either. But they control a roster of rules and regulations for our company, the nation, in which 24 million of us have a stake. So they have access to grey gifts of astronomical proportions. Grey gifts are everywhere, but we've dealt with them in some areas. In international sport, match referees control the game's rules and regulations, so we appoint referees from countries without a stake in the outcome. We could also use international experts when deciding on new transport infrastructure. In courts, juries are drawn randomly from the public to ensure they can't trade in grey gifts. We could appoint juries from the public to scrutinise recruitment decisions at the top of government departments. If you can't appoint a jury or an international expert, the most simple thing of all is to price grey gifts. Sell them or tax them. It removes the temptation for groups of mates to form around them and capture all the gains for themselves. And that's worth hundreds of billions of dollars.